one guy started talking about how he'd honed his interpersonal skills. Since there was nothing else he could excel at, it wasn't that he was trying to be arrogant. The contribution from his personal connections to the country was quite remarkable. And if we had to talk about flaws, it would be the fact that his ability is difficult for others to understand. There was a man sitting on the throne who was looking at this guy. He started asking if he had anything else to say. And later he said that he would repeat those words again. He sat up a little and called the boy's name. His name was Ned Walkenter, and he was eliminated from the Starlight Adventure team. Mark it. Everyone was shouting about different subjects. Someone wanted kind words, and someone shouted that he had magic tools in the counter. Ned went to one of the shops and told the clerk that he needed to buy some communication stones, and later I asked if they were for sale. The seller told Ned that he had such stones, but they were expensive, and the fact that Ned needs to pay 20,000 zen for one stone. Then the boy thought for a while and told the seller to give him six stones. The seller was a little surprised by this. The salesman asked Ned if he was making a mistake, because it was very expensive, and he could register connections with 100 people with just one stone. Ned began to think, and the seller began to tell him that one stone would be enough. But after a little thought, the boy said to give him eight. Ned started talking about how he planned to register 120 with each of them, so he asked for eight of these stones. The seller thanked the boy for the purchase, and thought about one question. Namely, were Ned 800 people? The boy approached the huge ship and began to shout about whether there were any empty seats there. He began to tell the captain that he wanted to take a ship to Ovid. The captain told the boy that there were still seats left, but there was a problem. This is because now there are restrictions on boarding. Ned didn't understand what those restrictions were. The captain began to talk about how a huge monster called the Kraken had risen out of the water on its way from this kingdom of Intal to the kingdom of Ovid and so only a rank people and adventurers who are on missions of public institutions for which it is necessary to immediately cross the ocean are allowed on board. Ned calmed down and said that there was no problem then, since he was in a rank adventurer. The captain looked at Ned and told him that he looked amazing. Ned told the captain that he could often hear this from people, and after some time, the man told the boy that he had reserved a seat and asked not to be late. Ned handed the man the coins. Ned started to leave, then stopped and thought. He approached the man and asked him to show the marine navigation map and the places where the Kraken was seen. The captain agreed and said that he would show him now. After a while, he gave Ned a map and told him that there was a place marked on it, but he didn't think it would do any good to know exactly where it was. The guy looked at the map, read it, and then gave it back to the man and told him that this path is safe, thanked him, and left. The captain didn't know what it was, but he was happy to help. There was work on the ship. All the sailors were shouting for the sails to be hoisted. Ned was glad he hadn't missed the ship. However, it should take Ned about a week to reach his destination. The guy took the newspaper and began to read and study it. There was news written in it, and one of them was that one team of heroes had left the capital. The other was related to a grand parade. Three days earlier, King of the Kingdom of Intal. The man sat on the throne and began to talk about how he wanted to appoint the Starry Sky team as a team of heroes of the country. Ned couldn't believe what he was saying. The king began to say that in his day, many countries appoint teams of heroes to fight the demon king, and despite this trend, the king's country considered this a sign from above, so it was decided to establish its own team of heroes. And the result was the recruitment of people from your Starry Sky team. Ned was the leader of the team, so he was called to the king. It was an honor for him. But Ned also added that it was a little selfish of him to start and lead the discussion of this issue as the king wants. The man sat on his throne and started telling Ned that based on what he had heard, he could tell that the guys looked like a pretty competent team. The guy agreed. The king added and said that these members that Ned is proud of also look very tempting, so he asked Ned for them to be a team of heroes of this country. This was the first step on the road to fame, and there was no reason to refuse this offer. Ned bowed and told the king that in that case he would generously accept the offer. But the man on the throne had something to say to the boy. The king told Ned that all this would happen without him. Ned didn't understand what was going on, or why the king had decided that. To which he replied that everyone in Starlight was extremely competent, except for the leader. And while all the participants are S rank adventurers, Ned barely holds the title of a rank adventurer and is simply dead weight. Ned disagreed and said that he was actually the leader. 
The king laughed and told the guy that he was a pathetic person as he clung to his position. For starters, even Ned's position is questionable. The king said that he had studied them with the help of the guild and asked Ned to explain the roles of the team members. It was impossible to say that there were five participants, including the leader. Attack and defense are assigned to the role of a knight. A warrior acts on the front line. The healer girl treats the victims. She is also a mage who specializes in long-range attacks. Then the king asked what about Ned. He said with a smile on his face that he was a manager if he was needed. The boy didn't understand. He believed that knight, warrior, healer, magic manager should be a standard combination. The king did not finish his speech, but said that the boy also has the audacity to claim that his interpersonal relationships are a weapon for the members of his team. Ned began to tell the king that this was a stupid punishment. The man got angry and got up from the throne. He started yelling at Ned that he couldn't do anything on his own without someone protecting him. He started talking about Ned admitting that it was all just an excuse. And that Ned really is a weakling. He can't leave the leadership of a hero team to someone like me. The boy said that he thought it was close to the truth. Someone called out to Ned. There was another man standing next to the king. He began to say that Ned should understand that everyone in this world has their own view of the team of heroes. And so if someone incompetent among them refuses, they will all be overwhelmed by a wave of criticism. And this one will happen again and again. And in the end, it can confuse the pride of the country. Then Ned decided to find another team of adventurers. The man who was standing next to the king started saying that the participants Ned had recruited were very experienced, so other adventurers couldn't compare to them. The man was very surprised when he realized this. A knight who received the blessing of Almighty God. A warrior who can fight for a long time without food or water. A healer who can bring you back from the dead, as well as a magician with three medallions of wisdom. The king asked Ned about a group of talents they didn't even know how or where they were recruiting from. Ned said he was looking for them like hell. But they don't understand it. Ned began to say what he would say while he still could. Namely, while he is still the leader of the starry sky. And instead of Ned being something of a leader, he was more of a beast tamer. He said that the team only exists because he is the only one who can control all these people. The king didn't understand what this guy was saying to him. Ned said that his work is directly related to interpersonal relationships, and the situation is settled before anything they can do affects the environment because of their exorbitant strength. The guy began to talk about what if the king takes away this position from him. Then he's more than sure they'll regret it. The king was looking at his assistant, and then he started laughing. They couldn't believe that they would regret anything. He said he would look forward to it if Ned was so competent that everyone would regret it after him. The king said he would take note of this. And then he said that he plans to replace Ned with Julius, who is the royal knight of the country. The king said that even though Julius is the same age as the boy, he is talented, unlike Ned, and he is more than enough to close the gap after Ned. And then everything happened again, just as it was at the very beginning. The king asked the guy if he had anything else to say, and then he decided to repeat it. About Ned Valkenter being excluded from the Starlight Adventure team. And then the king and his assistant asked him to get out of sight and said that he was forbidden to interact in any way with the team members. Ned couldn't believe that everything he had to say had passed them by. Ned said that all the people from Starlight are far from ordinary. And a successor, Julius, will most likely not be able to hold the reins of the members and team. Then holding Ned responsible for the damage they caused would be unbearable. So he decided it was better to move to a neighboring country while he still could, so that the influence of the entire kingdom wouldn't reach him. In the worst cases, one city will be destroyed by the time Ned reaches Ovid's kingdom. The boy closed his eyes and began to think about something. And then I decided that I needed to contact someone first. A girl was standing next to Ned, interested in his conversation. She listened to the guy telling someone how long it had been since he'd seen each other and asking someone if they were busy. Ned said he was on a ship bound for Ovid right now. The boy stood with the phone in his hands and listened to something, and then said that he left because of some circumstances. He decided to leave the country and will tell you everything in detail when to meet. A girl was on the phone with him. She had a smile on her face as she told Ned that she would be happy to take him around the city when he got there. Ned started telling the girl that he wanted to find a way to earn some money. He was going to register there as an adventurer and he needed the girl to help him with his work requests. 
She didn't mind and said that she would help him without any problems. Then I asked Ned if they were going to hunt wyverns. The guy said it sounds great and a wyvern's tail can be really delicious if you make a steak out of it. They talked a little more and then began to finish their conversation. A girl who had been eavesdropping on their conversation approached Ned. She apologized for interrupting him. Ned said he was done and asked the girl if she needed anything. The girl wanted to greet the guy in a friendly way. Ned didn't understand the greeting. After looking at him for a while, the girl said that her name was Maya Sent and she was a knight from Ovid. The boy said that he was Ned Vulcanter and that he was an adventurer in the kingdom of Intel. May guessed that if Ned was on this ship, then he was in a rank adventurer and how reliable he should be. The guy did not understand in what sense reliable. May said that there might be a Kraken waiting for them on the way, and if there is, then she has someone to rely on, so she's being nice. Ned laughed and told the girl that this was a unique opportunity, but he couldn't tell if she was being polite or just disciplined. He thought that she was probably very well-mannered. Ned looked out to sea and told May that he wouldn't cover her back if she needed to. The girl asked why. Back then, the boy said that he only achieved the title of an rank adventurer thanks to the members of his party. I was wondering if the guy was a fraud. Ned laughed and said that he often hears this from people. May said that she had heard that there would be an rank adventurer on board, and she expected a lot. And then she called the guy just a spineless coward. I waited a little, looked at the guy, and said that it doesn't matter anymore, and if the battle starts, just let the guy hide in some secluded corner. Ned laughed and said he would. That after all, he has a motto that says use the powers of others as your own. May listened to the boy and didn't believe that who would have thought that Ned would turn out to be such a disgusting scoundrel. Ned thought that only made the atmosphere around him worse. And the best outcome would be to not meet the Kraken at all. There were shouts from the ship. Some knights who looked very tired were asking each other various questions. One of them was asking how many days they still had to sail to Ovid, and my friend told him that today was the fourth day, so about three days or a little more. The knight was glad that he was finally halfway there. The ship began to shake. Everyone couldn't understand what was going on. Everyone was panicking. Huge waves broke out. Huge tentacles began to break the ship. All the people started shouting that a kraken had appeared. The knights shouted for everyone to hurry up, pick out their equipment, and move out. Ned lay there and realized that he must have appeared. And then the boy went out and looked at the kraken. He saw huge tentacles and the body itself in the water and realized that this was the kraken. Ned didn't think he'd ever encountered anything like this before. It was an incredibly dangerous creature, but it was also cowardly, and if it was an honorable opponent, then it would immediately sink to the bottom of the ocean. Therefore, if everyone had originally had some preliminary measure, then they would have been able to deal with him as soon as possible. Ned saw May. She was carrying the injured, and when she saw the guy, she asked what he was doing here. And then I asked him to hide somewhere, so that he would not interfere and go back to where he got out. The boy said that he would be happy to do it, but asked if the girl needed help. May told him not to worry. She also told Ned not to underestimate the Knight of Ovid. Ned understood one thing. To deal with the Kraken, you need to attack first, and as soon as possible. If everyone continues to stand up fearlessly and keep advancing, the Kraken will eventually retreat. Therefore, it would be good if the knights were already starting to attack together. But later, Ned realized that they obviously lacked physical strength. Ned realized that he had no choice but to call them. One of the knights began to attack the Kraken, and then fell. He was afraid that he would die. But May ran up to him and asked if he was okay. The knight said with a smile on his face that he was fine. May shouted to all the knights that the next attack was coming soon. The kraken broke everything it saw with its huge tentacles. The girl began to say that at this rate he would soon finish everyone off. The kraken begins to think that everything on the ship is just prey. May was looking for knights and didn't understand why there were so few of them. Shouldn't there be more knights on deck? Someone shouted that out of the ten knights on the deck, four were thrown into the ocean by the sudden attack. Two more are barely alive and are still being treated. And then the girl asked what about the other four. Someone said they were seasick. May swore that they were all useless. And the memory of what she'd called the boy came back to her. And I decided that I should apologize to him. After all, her colleagues are even more pathetic than Ned. May decided that she would lead the attack. A knight walked beside the girl. May ordered him to attack after her. The knight told her to wait a moment. 
he wanted to tell her something. The knight was sad, and he told her that the princess would be very sad if he attacked. May was very surprised by this news. She told the knight not to talk nonsense. Isn't it the duty of a knight to risk his life on the front lines? And at this rate, if everyone can't get rid of this thing, it's not just the knights who will suffer. The ship will simply turn into a wooden wreckage in the middle of the ocean. May also added that they have no other choice but to decide everything themselves. The knights rushed towards the kraken, but they knew that it had too many tentacles. One of the kraken's tentacles began to climb toward May. The girl was trying to fend off the kraken, and she somehow managed to block its attack. But these attacks were astonishingly heavy, and it was very bad. The girl understood that at the moment she is very vulnerable, and if the kraken starts attacking her now, then he will not be able to survive it and she will be killed. May tried her best to dodge the kraken's attack. Meanwhile, Ned began to climb to the highest peak of the ship, holding a shell that could summon the heroes of Starlight. And then he started blowing it. May didn't know where the sound came from. The kraken couldn't understand it either. Ned stood at the top of the ship and whistled. Everyone decided that this is a signal for something. The knights offered to get rid of him while they could. Everyone was running away to hidden places, but they didn't see anyone appear on the deck. May didn't understand what was going on. All the knights didn't know what to do. The kraken began to behave strangely. He was screaming in pain, but no one knew why so suddenly. May said that her numbness has passed, and she can move her arms and legs. She didn't understand why until a moment ago, they were the ones who were defending and couldn't attack. Right now, the kraken is screaming in pain and can't do anything to the humans. Someone began to appear in the sky. These were the heroes of Starlight, but they weren't ordinary. They were mermaids. May was very surprised to see them. All the knights were shouting about the mermaids attacking the kraken. They couldn't believe that the mermaids were helping them. It was impossible. The heroes attacked the kraken. There were many of them. May didn't understand anything. She knew that mermaids were supposed to be kind to humans. One of the mermaids punctured the kraken's eye. The monster began to fall to the bottom and drag the kraken to the bottom of the sea. The knights and humans couldn't believe that they were saved. Ned stood at the top of the ship and smiled. The mermaids began to shout for the inhabitants of the earth to give them a reward. They were shouting that they were able to destroy the kraken. The knights looked at it all and were amazed. Ned calmly walked to the edge of the ship and asked if the apples would suit them and later took a bag with them and threw them into the water. Apples floated in the water. The mermaids happily picked them up with their hands. They considered apples to be crystals of the embodiment of life. One of the mermaids said that it is no exaggeration to say that the inhabitants of the earth exist in order to produce such fruits. Ned looked at the mermaids with a smile. He believed that these words were still considered an exaggeration. Ned had a premonition that this might happen, so he bought some apples at the port. Mermaids have many preferred food items and apples are one of them. And if it improves their mood, then the guy doesn't mind buying as many apples as possible. Ned apologized for calling the mermaids so suddenly. They told him not to worry about it, because Ned had made a pact with them, and that's why the mermaids gave him this whistle. And also these sea creatures began to tell the guy that the queen expressed a desire to meet him and asked him to come to the castle. The mermaids begged Ned to come to them. The guy told the mermaids that he would visit the queen when he got comfortable in a new place. The mermaids told Ned that if he didn't come immediately, she would create a tsunami and sink this ship. All the knights listened to this and were very much afraid of their words. Ned said there might be a problem with that. The guy took another apple and threw it into the water. And then he asked the mermaids to help convince her for an apple. The mermaids said they understood everything. And then they began to swim away. Ned waved at them. May slowly began to approach the boy. She asked Ned what it was just now. The boy asked the girl if she was in the habit of eavesdropping on the phone and now. May got angry and told the guy that he was wrong. She just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. And also the girl added that it is natural to pay attention to the mermaids who drove away the kraken. It was important for her to know what it all meant. May started asking about mermaids. She didn't understand why they would help people if they were known for their hostility. And also people with them have an antagonistic relationship, which, not to mention the conversation, they will even behave aggressively when they meet. Ned said that would normally be true. But in the boy's case, he has a friendly relationship with them. They didn't understand how a mermaid could be friendly. The guy began to explain to the girl what was going on. 
he said that he made a pact with the Rugu flame that lives in the Western Sea. In response to this, his relationship with the flame Lauren living in the East Sea is not very good, but he is familiar with the one who made the contract with the flame Lore. Therefore, he can somehow negotiate with the mermaids from both seas. May couldn't understand. The guy realized that he had just shared information that he shouldn't have said. May said it was hard to believe. But in other words, she asked if Ned could negotiate with the mermaids. The girl realized that in the battle with the Kraken, Ned was the one who called the mermaids. The guy remembered that his motto is, Use the powers of others as your natural. Ned said that when it comes to borrowing other powers, he has no equal. And he's even proud of it. May said it was quite difficult. She also said that whatever it was, she understood that Ned was their savior. The girl asked Ned when he got off if he would have any free time, as she would like to thank him. Ned thought that he would be made a laughing stock again. And what about him who uses personal relationships as weapons, or rather, for someone who has nothing but his own personal relationships with others? Therefore, he has no reason to refuse this offer. The guy said that he would only be happy to meet and communicate with new people. Afford to new lands with replenishment of personal connections. And although the problem has already been dealt with, the sailors began to ask each other how the deck was being repaired. But another began to say that it was repaired normally enough, at least to reach its destination, and also one of them added that quite a large part of our cargo was simply washed away, and the remnants were scattered everywhere. The two sailors saw a silhouette in the distance. As they got closer, they noticed a kid who was sleeping. The sailors didn't know what to do and wanted to wake him up. May came up behind the guys and said that she would help them deal with this situation. She explained to them that Ned had E-rank abilities. She is sure that he has very little stamina, but in any case, let him rest. May wished the sleeping Ned sweet dreams. Kingdom. The king was talking about how he excluded Ned from the party. He was glad that now the dead weight was gone, and the country finally got the strongest team of heroes. And if they are very successful, they will surpass other countries. The king asked about the prime minister. He replied as for the previous discussions, he was not elegant in his words. The king's servant said that he was elegant, but not as elegant as the king himself. And yet, he's still a brat who definitely won't be able to counter anything. The king and his assistant were laughing. I could hear the laughter outside the door. He thought they were discussing something worthwhile. Ned couldn't get in touch with his friends at Starlight. The guy thinks they've taken the initiative. He decided that they should call. And to convey two things to them. It is precisely this that their Starlight party has been designated as a team of country heroes and that he is leaving the party. Ned didn't rule out the possibility that they could all just leave here for another country, but being selected as a team of heroes is a great honor. And you can't drag them down just because of your own problems. The guy decided that they didn't really care about honor or anything like that. He decided they'd better not write that part down. Then he remembered that there was something for sale in the cafeteria, and he would definitely need to go there. A guy came up to Ned and greeted him. Ned wasn't very happy to meet him. Ned was shouting that wasn't it the star of the Kingsguard standing next to him, Julius Dono. The guy told Ned to stop using such terrible language and treat him like he always did. Ned gave the boy a small look. Julius went on to say that Ned should be grateful to him. If he hadn't been so quick-witted, Ned would have had an overwhelming burden to bear. Ned remembered the king's words he had said in them about having Julio's as Ned's replacement. Ned asked about being the first to ask to be expelled. Julius said that he was the one who suggested excluding the boy from the party. The guy was laughing at Ned. Julius told Ned that he only had extensive connections, and without them, he was just an ordinary, good-for-nothing person. He said that Ned constantly relies on someone else, even though he doesn't do anything himself. Julius became sad. He talked about how Ned used it constantly at proms. Meanwhile, Ned looked at this guy, at his sadness, and realized that he wasn't emotionally stable. Ned and Julius have known each other since they were students at the academy, but despite this, as you can see, they do not get along very well. Julius screamed that Ned would never defeat the Demon King, but that wasn't a problem for him. Julius talked about being the strongest knight in the Royal Guard since time immemorial. In other words, he can definitely lead the hero party to fame. And when they can defeat the Demon King, Julius will marry the princess. Ned thought that choosing Julius as a replacement was a huge mistake. He understood that Julius had only become a royal knight in order to marry the princess. 
His motives are disguised by a sense of inferiority. The king really doesn't know much about people. Nell was saying that he had no intention of resisting since everything was already decided, but Julius had better manage them properly when the guy wasn't around, otherwise the country might be destroyed. Julius didn't know what nonsense he was talking about. The guy thought Ned was offended. A girl was standing on the aisle with the knights, and then ran towards them. The boys recognized her as a princess. Julius asked her how she was doing, and if she was alright. But the girl did not pay attention to the guy and ran straight to Ned. She started asking Ned why he was being expelled. Princess Iris offers to go to the king and talk to him about it. Ned had told her it wasn't necessary. The guy said that he already tried, but it didn't work out. Julius was yelling at the boy. He didn't understand why Ned was using that tone to the princess. Iris told Julius to stop because she was the one who asked Ned to talk to her like that. Ned realized that he wasn't bragging about having a weapon called interpersonal relationships for nothing. Ned and the princess spent quite a long time and talked a lot. And in the end, they got to the point where they can safely have a casual conversation. But Ned found it unfortunate that he was avoiding the king's company after the boy found out about his bad reputation. Ned told the princess not to worry, because Starlight would go on a rampage without a boyfriend, meaning they would live in peace. So Ned only offered to cheer for them. After all, for all of them now the most important thing. This is to defeat the Demon King and bring peace back to the world, the princess pondered Ned's words. And later he said that he believes that this is true. Iris clenched her small fists and said that she would support the hero team. Ned was glad that the princess was so naive. Ned had something to ask the princess. He asked her if she could help the guy deliver a couple of messages. Iris agreed and asked who the MX should be sent to. The guy told the girl that to start with a general secretary. Once, while traveling, he met a man who was engaged in the printing business, and because it has a big factory. The guy asked me to tell him that if he was interested, he should contact Ned. And another message needs to be delivered to the cardinal, so that he can come to the treatment center in the West Ward. This man had been ill for six months, and Ned was looking for a good doctor for him. The guy asked him to tell the doctor that he knew Ned, and then the doctor would be able to help him. The princess said that she would definitely deliver the messages. Julius laughed and said that Ned, as always, thinks only of others. The guy said that these are just small points that he wanted to solve along the way. And then the boy told Julius that he also had something to ask of him. Ned took out the letter and asked Julius to give it to the remaining members of the party. Julius wondered what it was. Ned said it was a farewell letter for his former party members. Julius laughed and told Ned that if he didn't deliver his letter, he would throw it in the trash. The guy decided that it was better to give it to the princess. Iris said that she would work hard for Ned Sama. Julius was angry with the boy. He said there was a part of him. And this part is one of the things he tries to ignore. Ned told the guy to take care of himself. Even though he hated the king and the aristocrats of this country because of this incident, but he didn't hate Julius. The guy himself said he hated Ned. It was just a dream of Ned, who fell asleep on the ship. One of the knights was looking out to sea. He was asking May if it was okay to invite adventurers from another country. The girl said that he was their savior, and she did not think that there would be any problems with this. In any case, Russia likes adventurers. May saw that Ned was awake and reminded him that she wanted to thank him. She asked if he was available today. Ned told her he was free all day. The girl said that on this occasion there is one place where she would like to go with him. Ned realized that she was talking about something like a castle or something. He had often been in situations like this. The girl said that it is necessary to prepare for disembarkation as they will soon reach the port. The ship was able to sail. Ned stamped his foot on the ground in surprise. The girl said welcome to the land that made a pact with the dragon, the kingdom of Ovid. May said that when this kingdom was founded, it borrowed the power of a huge dragon, blessing this kingdom with soil fertility and an abundance of mineral mines. Ned was surprised that the founding of the state was supported by a dragon. He decided that there should be, this country is one of a kind. The guy looked at it all and smiled. Ned found the country breathtaking. Some passers-by were also pleased with her. May added that this city was visited by the legendary adventure team Seven Meteors. I wasn't shocked by May's words like that. The girl looked at the guy's face and decided that he didn't know about the seven meteors. The guy said that of course he knows them, 
because it can't be that he doesn't know. Clearing an impregnable dungeon. Conquer monsters that threaten the world. Unprecedented land reclamation. Their achievements are incalculable. They can even defeat the Demon King. The strongest team of adventurers in the world, Seven Meteors. This is already a well-known fact. Just at the same time, it was widely known that they disbanded a year ago. Afterward, Ned asked if they'd ever visited the city. May said yes. And to be precise. Then they passed by only through this area. But since it was Seven Meteors, then there is definitely something to be proud of. Thanks to their fame. Their presence here even turned the place where they stayed into a tourist destination. Perhaps this harbor is being used to spread this story for economic gain. Ned asked the girl about the fact that there weren't several famous adventure teams in this country. May agreed with the guy and said that the most famous of them was the Knight Order of the White Dragon. The White Dragon Knight Order became famous for conquering monsters. They are the object of admiration of all the knights of this country, especially the S-ranked adventurer and part-time leader Rise von Aldiana. She comes from a former aristocrat background and is known for her nobility and beauty. Nell asked if the girl admired her. She agreed with him and said that just like the Seven Meteors, they deserve the most respect. Later, the girl asked about the people from Ned's country, and she wondered what their most popular adventure teams were. The guy thought about it and said that most likely this is a party that was recently appointed as a team of heroes. These are the ones that started their journey when they left the Intal Kingdom. May asked about the team of heroes. Someone was happy about the news. Someone was selling something. At the girl's question, the guy decided to think. Ned said that, with their strength alone, he thought they could match up to any team of heroes from any country. The guy asked the boy for a newspaper. Me didn't believe Ned's words and called them nothing. After waiting for the transport for a while, the girl said that they would go by carriage. She asked if Ned was ready. The guy began to talk about how very tired he was. May began to say that he had been asleep before and should have had a good night's sleep. Later, the gate opened and the carriage drove away. After a while, the carriage began to go slower. Ned realized that they had left the port city and entered the capital. Ned had a great view of the kingdom of Ovid. The kingdom was very large and beautiful. May said she was introducing the guy to her employer, Princess Russia Sama. The boy taught that a girl could be something like an official or an aristocrat. And later, he asked if May was a real knight. The girl replied that she was a royal knight, but you shouldn't worry because her highness is very friendly. Even though May has to behave like a title, she said if Ned didn't want to go, then I can cancel everything right now. Ned refused. He wanted to meet her. He replied that dating people he'd never met had become a principle that the guy always followed through on. May said it was a wonderful principle. Ned thought about it and realized that if something happened to him, maybe the girl would rush to save him. May took it back and said that Ned's principle was very calculating. The guy with a smile on his face said that he is more than sure that there is no calculation in its principle, and this is just a delusion. May said that she had already informed Russia Sama about the guy on the phone and that she was ready to meet him. The girl outside the door was shouting that it was the Royal Knight May and she had brought a guest. The girl was allowed to enter. There was a girl sitting on the throne. She asked if it was Ned. And then, without waiting for an answer, he said that her name was Russia Inuvidia and she was the princess of this country. And then Russia said that she was very happy to meet the guy. The girl screamed that she was Lucil and Vidya, and that she was the queen of this country. She was happy to meet the guy. Ned's years of experience suggested that this introduction would definitely be good for him. Lucille told the boy that he was May's savior, and that Ned could consider the queen a friend. And the queen won't mind if the guy starts talking to her in a less formal tone. After all, there are some aristocrats and royals who are tired of the formalities. Nevertheless, the guy thinks that you should talk to her more politely. Ned Walkinter introduced himself and told the queen that he was an adventurer. The queen began to tell the guy that she really admires adventures and adventurers. But despite the fact that she admires such people, this does not mean that they will be able to get along personally. The girl was pouring tea. She asked the guy if she could express her gratitude to him for saving May. The queen said that May is one of the few friends I have who can open up to her. And if the guy couldn't defeat the Kraken, then the girl would grieve with grief. Ned said that he really appreciated her gratitude, but the guy admitted that he didn't really do anything. 
He said that in the end, the ones who defeated the dragon are. But before Ned could say a word, the queen interrupted him, and she answered about mermaids. The queen asked the boy if he had decided where he would rest. Ned was drinking tea and said he hadn't thought about it yet. The princess invited him to stay in the castle. The queen wanted to hear stories of Ned's adventures. The princess was incredibly fond of adventure stories. Later, Ned realized the real reason he'd called her here. The guy said he didn't mind. Ned told the princess a lot of stories. She found out what happened to the flying dragon. Ned began to say that his friend shot at the core of the temple, which caused it to collapse and currently fragments of the castle are sold as souvenirs of the area. The princess laughed and marveled that the legendary land had suddenly become a kind of portable souvenir. The guy continued his stories and told the princess that after that, it was necessary to subdue the monster found in the crater. He also had a story about how they climbed the volcano. The princess listened to all the stories with her mouth open. She really liked it. The princess became interested in one thing. Namely, this is how they were able to defeat the crater. After all, there is no air from it. Ned said that a friend of his froze the volcano while they were dealing with it. The girl did not believe that such a thing was even possible. Ned said that those who are strong enough and powerful enough, apparently, can do it. The guy understood what the princess was feeling right now, because he was surprised when everything happened with his own eyes. The boy still remembered the words when he said it. The man was talking about developing a new magic for Ned. The guy saw that the snowman was completely frozen. Now that Ned was thinking about it, about this magic, he knew that she didn't care about her presence and didn't believe that she really intended to freeze the guy. Ned wondered what else they could talk about with the princess, but that wasn't the case. Ned came up to the girl and began to say that it was time to go to bed, otherwise it would affect the queen tomorrow. The princess looked at the time and did not understand how time passed so quickly because only nothing passed as the girl lost track of time during the conversation. Ned was glad that the princess liked his stories. The queen was very surprised. She didn't understand why Ned didn't look nervous. He didn't understand why he should feel nervous. The girl said that it was strange to say this, but she was interested to ask the guy if he was a beauty from his point of view. Ned paused and then replied that the princess was very beautiful. The queen smiled at the boy. She was glad she was pretty. That's what she thought. But because of her beauty, most men would find it difficult to talk to a girl, but the princess realized that Ned was used to it. The guy said it might be true. The queen asked the guy if there were any beauties like her. The guy replied that they are rare, but they do occur. Ned had a question. He understood that Lucille liked stories about adventurers, but he wondered if the princess had ever participated in such adventures. The girl began to talk about how she was the queen of the country and she had a lack of freedom and was also very afraid to fight. The queen knew that if she encountered a monster, she would have to fight it. But she doesn't want to because she was afraid of fights and conflicts. Ned didn't believe that such a queen had such a cowardly trait. The princess was angry. She didn't understand what he meant by a cowardly trait. She said that she has her own fears and worries. Ned said there was nothing wrong with being afraid of conflict. But with the way they were communicating now, he thought she was a bit more brave. May came up behind the princess and said that Lucille wasn't training in weapons, after all. The queen asked the girl not to tell him about such things. Ned said that everything is fine and the royals should not risk themselves in battle. And even if a princess can't fight, it doesn't take into account the value of such a mistress. Moreover, I don't have the strength to fight. Ned realized that the girl needed to be cheered up. He apologized and told the princess that as long as she was the queen, it was best for her to have some strength. Lucille said that everything was fine and the guy wasn't wrong about that. The girl began to talk about how she had no strength and was a dog, so she must be a coward. May spoke again about the time. The princess was on her way to her room. While walking, she told the guy that she had fun today and was completely satisfied. And she also said that now she will go to rest. Ned had said that if he did, he would decline. One of the maids mentioned that this would be Ned Sama's room. She began to say that the castle also has a large outdoor bath and the guy can use it if he wants. Ned thanked the maid. Ned was looking at some things. He said that he needed to register contact information in the communicators. The guy said that he registered more than 500 contacts, but there are still at least 200 left. Ned wanted to call it a day. The boy's bag fell on the table and opened. 
In it, Ned could just make out the newspapers he'd bought on the street while chatting with May and hadn't read them yet. The boy picked up the newspaper and began to read it. Some news struck Ned the most. He began to talk about how he had warned them. The news was that a group of Intel Kingdom heroes had destroyed the city. The Kingdom of Intel. One of the servants ran to the king, shouting that he had terrible news. The king himself was sitting with a bottle of wine and was very angry that he was being distracted. A servant told the king that the hero parties had destroyed the city. The king began to ask what this meant and asked him to explain the news to the servant. The servant began to talk about what Julius had said. They met up with the demon king's subordinates and engaged them in a fight. The city was destroyed by the blast wave. The lake, which was a tourist attraction, was also destroyed, and the nearby forest was burned down. The servant said that fortunately the residents managed to escape, but many of them are demanding compensation. The king did not understand how this could have happened. He believed that Julius must have had the communication stone with him. And then the king asked me to contact him immediately, and the king himself wanted to talk to him in person. The servant began to say that if they contacted him about this right now, only the residents would answer them. A servant was telling the king that Julius' campaign was going to bed because of overworking. The king didn't understand what was happening. After all, it had only been five days since their journey started. He didn't understand how Julius had managed to recycle in that time. The king's assistant said that according to the report, one of the heroes heard a cry for help and disappeared. The warrior focused on hunting monsters to the point where it was impossible to talk to him. The mage has locked himself in the city's libraries until he reads all the books, and the monk began to revive the dead, bringing great confusion and celebration. The king didn't know what to do. He didn't know what the hell Julius was doing. The servant went on to say that no matter what Julius said, the rest of the group kept objecting. All the band members wanted to hear was Ned. The servant told the king that they were not following orders. The king thought Ned had brainwashed them all. The king remembered Ned's words. He realized that this was true when he said that the group of heroes was controlled only by Ned. The king was shocked. He couldn't believe what he was saying. He understood that Ned wasn't particularly talented on his own, so even in their country, he didn't earn many achievements. But at the same time, such a person was able to control the members of the group, but the king did not understand why Julius could not do this. The king told the servant that as soon as Julius got well, he had to pass on some words to him. Namely, if the members of the group continue to be impertinent, they will be punished. Also, if necessary, Julius can use the king's authority to intimidate them. A few days later, a servant opened the door. He shouted that according to the report, Julius was seriously injured. The king couldn't stand it any longer. Ned decided to look for this large bathroom. The guy recalled the words of the maid who said that there was a large bathroom for guests and he really wanted to use it. Out of the corner of his eye, the boy noticed a maid carrying clothes. The guy asked her for one minute to ask her something. He said that he would like to get into the bath. The maid told the guy that he should go straight down the aisle to the wall, then turn left and there he will already see the bathroom. The guy thanked the maid. The princess was sitting in the tub and May was giving her a massage. The guy walked into this huge bathroom and was surprised by the size. He thought it was quite luxurious, but not quite. But even though, in all of Ned's adventures around the world, there were no such grandiose places. He said that this is how you should greet your guests. There was steam all over the room and no one was in sight. Only voices could be heard. The girl asked another how her water temperature was and the other answered her that everything was fine and she really liked it. The guy decided that these were previous visitors. He decided that they must be aristocrats since they were invited to the castle. But if they've invited a simple person like Ned, then it's probably a common thing for them to do. The guy decided that he should look them in the face and say hello. All the steam laughed and disappeared. The boy looked at the girls and realized that it was the queen and May was sitting next to her. The girls started screaming and didn't know what Ned was doing. The princess stuttered and asked what the guy was doing here. Ned told the girls that he wanted to know where the guest bathroom was, but apparently she gave them directions to the bathroom used by Lucille and her entourage. She must have been very busy. The girls didn't know what to do. They wanted to close up and they needed to get a towel. The princess was shouting at May to get a towel for her. The girl went to fetch it for her. May stepped on a wet spot. And then she fell into the water. 
She got fully to her feet, and the princess shouted that she was fully visible. May called Ned a vulgar man and told him that there was nothing else she could do but die. The guy denied it. He said that he would leave, and the two of them should stay in the bathroom. Ned started to leave. V then turned to them completely naked and asked about the location of their guest bathroom. The girls screamed at him about what he was doing. They didn't understand why he was so calm. Ned began to say that there was no point in worrying. And Ned was thrown everything he could get, and the girls shouted at him that the guest bath was one floor down, and then asked him to get out. The guy didn't know what to do if he was accused of insulting Her Majesty. The guy decided that in this case he would have to leave. He wondered if it was too free. What if he wanted to make an attempt on the princess? He said it was terribly controlled right now. But he also added that even when the entrance and the castle's circumferences are well protected, there are many loopholes inside the castle. The guy was looking for a reason for this. Morning came. The guy got up and said that he had a great night's sleep and was feeling great. The boy went to the window and saw a heavy fog. But he didn't remember it raining yesterday. Ned went outside. I couldn't see anything in this fog. The guy wanted to walk to the beautiful garden, but did not guess the time and decided to go back to the castle. Ned saw something. It was a shadow of some sort. The guy decided that it was from the castle. But after a moment's thought, Ned realized that a shadow was impossible in such a place. The guy noticed that the shadow is about twice as high as the castle, or even more. This shadow had a sound, and this one amplified the sound. Nell decided to do something. He didn't understand what it was, and who was hiding behind this shadow. The shadow rising out of the morning mist. Ned stood looking out at the fog. He was very much worried about this weather. He couldn't understand what could have happened to make this shadow appear. Watching this shadow, the guy did not understand who it was, but Ned noticed from the shadow that this creature was moving towards the castle. And if it's moving, it's probably a monster. Ned was very much afraid of monsters and did not understand what he would do if the monsters came and beat him. A little later, the queen came out to the boy who wished the guy a good morning. Ned asked her if she had seen anything unusual. Maybe I saw something terrible. The princess was concerned about the guy's questions and she decided to find out what was wrong and why he was acting like this. Ned said he was fine. Ned told the girl that since the age of three, he did not want to show his sadness even to his father. The girl couldn't help but start talking about the bathroom too. She told Ned that he was staring at her very hard. The guy said that there can't be such a thing, and it's not his fault in what happened yesterday. The girl said that she had heard about the incident from the maid, and it wasn't Ned's fault. And after Ned's words, the boy thanked her very sincerely and kindly. They decided to leave the garden. All the fog began to clear. Nell might not have shown it, but he was still concerned and casually asked the girl if anyone else had run through. The princess began to say that there should be no one here but her people, and what kind of shadow it was, no one knew, and the girl decided that it was just her imagination. After waiting a little while, she asked Ned what he planned to do in this country. Ned said that he was thinking about it, and he decided that he would go register with the Adventurers Guild first, and then I thought to find a living. The girl began to tell the guy that in their world, and in every country is full of adventurer guilds and unfortunately interpersonal relationships are not perfect. Therefore, for every adventurer who wants to work in this country, a mandatory registration is required. The guy added that starting from the lowest class. The girl said that Ned was an adventurer in the kingdom of Intal, so it would play into the guy's hands. Lucille, with a smile on her face, told the guy that she would appoint May as Ned's guide. The guy looked at the girl in surprise and did not understand what they wanted from him. He wasn't sure about that. He also wasn't too happy about May being the guide. The adventure stories that Ned had told the princess last night had been very interesting and exciting to her. She thanked the guy for that. Ned looked at her with a sweet smile. The guy looked at the girl and always wanted to say something to her. He told the girl that she was very peerless. The girl said that then she would not give up her kindness. The guy decided to ask the princess one question. He said that since it was all a topic, he would be very interested to know why May went to the Intal Kingdom. The guy immediately remembered the ship, her words, her smile. She shouted that she became a knight of another country. After a short walk, the girl and Ned walked through the market. Ned began to tell the girl that when he saved people from the Kraken, it was when a noble family from the country was there. They were guarded for several days. Ned decided that he really should apologize to her. 
He went over to May and wanted to talk to her about that night. She didn't understand what exactly the boy wanted to discuss and thought that he wanted to tell her about another adventure. Ned told May that he wanted to apologize to her in the bathroom. She didn't know what Ned was talking about. She laughed and told him that after everyone had left Madame Lucille's room, nothing else had happened. On the way, May called out to the boy. She wanted to ask the guy something. They stopped. So the girl decided to inquire about the stories he was telling Madame Lucille. She would like to know, preferably in detail, if they were true. The guy didn't understand what the girl meant by that. May began to talk about various animal cases. For example, the case of the flying castle and the freezing of the volcano. The boy asked the girl why she wanted to be like this. He thought that Vika was just for the sake of profit to entertain Mistress Lucille. May thought that the boy was exaggerating his own achievements. A little not understanding what the girl wants from him, he said that he does not invent anything and does not exaggerate, but so it was in reality. May began to laugh. She thought it was impossible. After all, if this was true, then the boy would have an S rank, not an A. The boy said that everything is true, he has an A rank, but the others have an S, so this can all be considered true. May stood there with her mouth open and didn't understand what was going on. She didn't want to believe that Ned was right. The girl said that if the story was true, then there were only three parties that got to the flying castle, and two of them were definitely not from this country. The girl only had one chance to check everything out. May was told that it was all impossible. The guy found out that May knows more about adventures than he does. Afterward, he thought back to yesterday's speech when the girl said that she was fascinated by the commander of the White Dragon Knight Order. Ned asked May if they were heading in the right direction, to which the girl said that this is the right road and they should go around the corner and to the right. May wondered what Ned would do after registering with the guild and whether he would accept requests. The guy told the girl that he would do so. He said that he had been told that he could sleep in the castle tonight and that he would not disturb anyone else. May told the guy that in this case she would help him. She said that Mistress Lucille said she had to spend the day with you, helping you with what you were going to do. May told the guy that she was a B-rank adventurer in the guild, so she could accept requests. Ned said it would be nice if they did. But still, the guy said he had already arranged for someone to help and asked if it would be okay for May if they met. The girl didn't mind at all. May replied to the guy that he already has a partner, but it should be borne in mind that putting the work on other seas not the motto of the girl. The guy told her it was the only thing he could do. A little later, they came to the Adventurer's Guild and decided to go inside. Ned replied that he was supposed to meet his partner here, but he couldn't be seen yet. The girl asked Ned who her partner was. Ned said it was a secret for now. May didn't understand why. And then a silhouette began to approach the table. May was surprised when she saw the beautiful girl. All the people sitting at the table were shocked by such beauty. They thought this girl was pretty. And then the girl herself came to the table and said hello to Ned. The guy said hello to the girl. He knew her by name. The girl's name was Yo. May looked at the girl with admiration. She couldn't believe it. Yo looked at May and didn't understand who she was. The guy replied that this is his second partner. After learning this, the girl decided that it would be more correct to introduce herself. She replied that she was the commander of the adventurer's party of the White Dragon Knight Order. Her name was Rise Von Aldera, and she was happy to meet the girl. May took her hand and shook it. The girl asked about the fact that Miss May is a knight of the Imperial Guard of Her Highness, the Princess. The girl said it was true. Ned replied that they would accept requests for monster suppression, so it didn't hurt to know who you trusted with your back. Ray's asked May a lot of questions. She wondered how Ned had met the girl, and then she decided that it was probably fate. She was saying that she had heard that the Knights of the Guard were first-class swordsmen. May's response was very short and clear. Ned looked at the girl and realized that maybe she was worried because she respected Ray's so much. May was very worried about Milan. Ray's had told the girl not to respond like that. Ned realized that May didn't seem to stop worrying. He realized that he should go to bed immediately. And then I decided to go register. Ray's told the guy that when registering, the guy should only be assigned an E rank. And in this case, Ned will not be able to accept large requests. Ned said he knew that. But in any case, the girl told the guy that he showed what he was capable of. Ned shouted after the girls that he was going to get a D rank right away in his usual way. 
Ned went to the open window where the girl met him. She asked what she could do for him. The guy replied that he wanted to become an adventurer in this country. The girl said she understood him, and she asked me to fill out this registration form. Ned remembered that there were usually four categories to fill out. The first was the strength level. You need to enter the indicator 1-7, indicating the level of physical strength. This all affects the battle with monsters in real combat. One an ordinary person, and as a hero about six. There aren't even ten people in the world with a score of seven. The second was a unique piece of equipment. It was necessary to literally enter a special weapon or armor if available. Ned decided that it might be worth putting a raise in there. The third is God's protection. It is necessary to indicate what the powers of a special subject are endowed with other than you. Now every brave in intel is protected by such a special creature. And the fourth is an additional one. It is necessary to indicate what is special in a person as in adventurers. The guy decided to write about the fact that he has special abilities which imply the use of other people's powers. Ned quickly filled out the registration form. And then I gave it back. The form said he was Ned Walkenter. His power level is 1. God's protection is missing. Unique equipment depends on the circumstances. And in the additional one, he wrote a belief in personal connections. The girl read the questionnaire and did not understand what kind of belief in personal connections. Ned replied that he was not separated from her. And Ned also added something. He needs to make sure to rise to D rank, just like in the Intel Kingdom. He asked what the condition for getting a D rank is, after all, successful completion of 10 questions. The girl said it was true. Then the guy told her that he would like to immediately accept the request. Ned suggested that the girl provide him with requests for finding people. The girl said that she understood Ned, and he should wait a bit. Search queries for people are quite unpopular. Since these are mostly personal requests, the reward for them is great. Sometimes they are cancelled due to an error. Since requests often remain unfulfilled, guild employees probably want to close such a request as soon as possible. The girl apologized for waiting. She said that here are the search queries for people who are currently available in the guild. There are approximately 30 of them, and there are also requests for missing persons from other departments within the country. Ned replied that he had already decided what he would choose. The girl looked at the guy in surprise. Ned started calling someone. It was Lenival. The guy said that they haven't seen each other for a long time. He apologized for being so sudden and asked if he had seen two men from his village last week. Lenoval was saying something to the guy. Ned said that he understood everything and would help the guy a lot. Lenovo had told Ned in detail about the two men. After that, Ned called another person and heard the voice of the girl Seika. He was glad to hear it and said that he had not known anything about it for a year. He wanted to tell her something. This is something that he congratulates on winning the swordsman competition that took place two weeks ago. And later, he asked the girl if the red-haired girl was working at the event site. Seiki didn't know what to say to the guy. Later, Ned called another person. It was Lord Levin. The boy said that he was very happy to hear it. Later, he asked the boy if he knew all this information. The Lord said that it was true because he is the clairvoyant Lord Levin. And the Lord also thanked the guy for the information provided. Lord indignantly asked the guy if he had broken off his daughter's marriage proposal. Ned said that it wasn't him and that it was Lloyd's own fault. After talking to the Lord, the boy began to call another person, Charlene. Ned apologized for being so late. The guy explained to the girl that he was looking for a man who was lost in her forest. Nej felt like he was lost and wanted to know what the animals were thinking. Charlene said something to the guy. Ned told her that he understood everything and said that if a girl needed care, then Ned would take her at any time. After a while, Ned was talking to Eddie. The guy had one request for him. After that, the boy called Elena. He wanted to ask her something and find out. And then he called again and again and again. Only Skip's names. It was Alex and Lord and Ziz and Yufa and Narak. There was a pile of papers on the table. Ned realized that he had done all the work and all he had to do was put everything back together. The guy approached the girl and said that he was done. He explained and said that he had completed all the requests he had received. And also in the app, Ned briefly described the subject's location, contact details, safe location information, and so on so they could check them out. The girl asked Ned to wait a bit. 
Outside the door, there were screams and a lack of understanding of what was happening now and how he was able to do it so quickly. Employees were coming every minute. Ten minutes later, the girl said that they confirmed all completed requests. She gave Ned a reward and an adventurer's card. The boy said goodbye to all the employees and began to leave. Afterward, he approached the girls and apologized to May and Ray's for waiting so long and offered to take the request. Ray's considered the boy's words. And then I asked him if he could pull off something incredible. Ned replied that as Ray's me honed her sword skills, he made new connections with various people. The guy thought it was really cool. Ray's told the guy that wasn't true at all. The girl replied that as always the guy is modest. She told the guy that traveling all over the world with the Order of the White Dragon, from her point of view, Ned is the only one with such an incredible ability. The guy replied that even so, in the end, all he does is use the power of others. Ray's replied that at the very least, she did not allow anyone to use her power. Ned looked at the girl and admitted that he didn't have such low self-esteem after all. And he clearly remembers each of his achievements. But in each case, the guy did not achieve this on his own. In all cases, there was outside help. He replied that there was nothing to be proud of. And if he acts as if someone else's achievements are special to him, then this will probably be the end of the relationship. The girl was worried about something. She told him that if he made so much money on his own, then whether he needed it to fulfill the request. The guy said that there was a misunderstanding. After all, there are not always requests for people to search for, at least that's why he can't count on them alone. The guy replied that although they are easier to perform than fighting monsters, but they also end quickly because of their ease of execution. Because many people, like Ned, earn money in this way. Ned was pleased to have such two reliable partners. And then the guy decided to discuss which request is best to accept. Ned and Ray's were thinking of taking the wyvern suppression request, since suppression usually has a higher reward. But since there were three of them with May's addition, it was better for them to take the request for the Red Wyvern. Everyone was a little confused about what kind of request it was and what to do in it. The guy began to talk about how the Red Wyvern is a top class, and the order condition is three or more participants with an average rank of B. Ned replied that they could take this order, since the raise was S rank. But if that's all the mission entails, then they need to take another request to suppress the ogres. Me didn't understand what Nell was saying and asked him to step back for a moment. She screamed at him and asked him if he wanted to send her to her death. May talked about how it's okay to raise, but she's just an ordinary Imperial Guard Knight. She doesn't want to appear worthless, so they can't go to the Red Wyvern. The girl said that this monster could only be defeated by a few adventurers of Class A. Ned agreed with the girl's words, but the girl complained. She said that one ogre is one thing, and ten is too much, and they can't fulfill these requests. May screamed that they were going to die at this rate. Ned noticed that when May was sitting at the same table as Ray's, she was calmer and more confident. May was talking about what they would do if the girl sprained her leg and failed the assignment. And the girl also noted that at this rate, a huge dirty mark will appear on the perfect reputation of Mrs. Ray's. Ned didn't think the girl had so many thoughts in her head. The guy pointed out that Ray's reputation wasn't perfect. May didn't know what kind of place it was. May said that when she saw Miss Ray's with her own eyes, she thought she was perfect. He has perfect movements, the noblest fool that only came from her presence. The girl's heart sank. The guy replied that even if they get in the way, they don't think they'll have any problems with their Ray's abilities. May apologized and said that she was relying on Ned. Ned was glad that the girl agreed. Ray's also said that she didn't mind. Then the guy replied that everything was decided. And so their adventure began. Ned, May, and Race were in the carriage. They were shouting that they were on their way to the Red Wyvern. Ned calmed May down and told her that it was all over and she could calm down. The girl told the guy that she could not calm down in any way. May could not calm down and she ran out into the street and said that she would be on the lookout. May couldn't calm down because this was a journey with Lord Ray's. Ray's was telling the guy that Miss May was shaking a little. Ned replied that she probably wasn't in a very good mood, she just had enough of the ride. Ned and Rees were sitting in the carriage, and the girl decided to ask the guy why he decided to come to the Kingdom of Ovid. Ned replied that they hadn't really talked about anything while they were on the boat, and if Ray's wanted him to give her a quick explanation of what had happened up to that point, the guy did. The girl realized that Ned was kicked out of the hero's party. 
she realized that it's probably not easy for her. The guy said that it's not so hard for him. Ray's asked him not to hold back because she knew about his past. Ned told Ray's not to be depressed when she talked about it. They had never traveled with Ray's in the same party before. They had first met quite a long time ago, and Ray's knows Ned to some extent. The girl said that now her way out. Ray's slowly approached the boy. She told Ned to listen to her. The girl began to say that if he wants to be pampered, the girl can let him play with her breasts. Ned had a bad feeling about this. The guy told her to stop. Ray's asked him not to restrain himself because she could take off her breastplate right now. The guy told her to stop. The girl began to say that Ned was as modest as ever. The girl took off her bib and said that her breasts were ready to be caressed at any time. The girl was ready to warm Ned up. But the guy told the girl to stop. He slapped her and she leaned back. Ray's replied that he was a very cold man and because of him, her feelings only intensified. The guy said he didn't care. Ned told the girl to adjust her annoying personality. Since no feelings are amplified on the part of the other participant, the girl said that no matter how many times you don't tell her, the conversation will be useless. The girl replied that she has such a trait by nature, and you can say her sexual inclination. Ned replied that she was one of those people who proudly talks about her lustiness. For some reason, Ray's seems to have a strong attraction to men who are younger than her. Ned and Rise are only three years apart, which probably falls within her boundaries or something. Ned didn't understand why he was surrounded by so many weirdos. The guy asked to catch his breath. Afterward, he asked her if her sexual tendencies were hindering her in the Knight's Order of the White Dragon. The girl replied that she did not, and she does not behave like this in front of strangers. Ray's said that everyone approved of her relationship with him. The guy did not understand why she advertised it. Ray's said that everyone was pushing her, so she took the principle and decided not to hold back in front of him. And then she said that in that case, since he had broken her heart, he could let her treat him. Ray's said she wanted to rinse Ned out, or he could lie on her lap. She also said that she has an ear stick that you might need. Ned replied that he didn't want any of it, and she should forget about the ear stick. Ned didn't look at her and asked her to put the breastplate back on. The girl said that for the sake of it, she specially took it off, and the fact that she can't help herself. Ray's asked him if he would be willing, since she had a wand for her ears. Ned told her that he could clean her ears without her help. The girl told him that she would be gentle with the guy. Ray's climbed on top of the guy and wanted to talk to him. Ned screamed at her to get off him. May began to step into the carriage. She told him that she had returned and found no monsters in the area. Ray's was lying on top of the guy. Rise started telling May not to worry. And maybe she misunderstood, so she should listen to the Ray's carefully. May couldn't say anything to that. May started hitting Ned. She wondered what he was doing to Mrs. Ray Ray's. Ned said it was quite the opposite. Meanwhile, the destination is still far away. May's excitement was growing, gradually increasing. After all, she had the task of suppressing the red wyvern and suppressing the ogre. The red wyvern attacked with its tail. May created heavy and fast punches. Everyone began to notice that her intelligence was low and her movements were unpredictable. And as long as no one is scared, they can anticipate and avoid bumps. Meanwhile, May replied that she had to cut off the long tail of the big red wyvern. The girl noticed that the red wyvern had taken to the air for the first time. Ray's asked May if she understood her dragon's modus operandi. May said she understood. Horned head, huge wings, long tail. The wyvern's outward resemblance to a dragon can easily make you lose heart, but their nature is quite different. A wyvern's body is an order of magnitude smaller than a dragon's. The mind is far from sharp. The movements are straight, as befits an animal, and the trajectory of the attack is predictable. In addition, the wyvern lacks a dragon's breath-like projectile. She must land on the ground. May responded in order to anticipate and avoid the blow. She needed to wait for the moment to counterattack when the wyvern substitute dropped to the ground. Ned said it was true, since it doesn't have as thick scales as a dragon, and she won't be able to hit enough. In general, compared to a dragon, a wyvern might look like a much weaker opponent. It still requires a decent amount of physical training to anticipate and avoid her attacks. May thought that compared to what he said, she thought she was going to have to work hard. But gradually the girl began to fight better, as May begins to feel the rhythm of the attacks. Moreover, the opponent lost his tail. This means that you will have to attack closer to the ground. 
May realized that she could find a place to attack and inflict a deep wound, and it remains only to catch the moment and deliver the blow that would finish her off. And this particular moment was right now. The girl killed the Red Wyvern and couldn't believe her words. Rise was standing off to one side, not too happy that May had managed it alone. Ned stood off to the side, supporting the girl. May asked him if he was going to do nothing all this time. The guy replied that he could help, but because of him, everything will only drag on and he can become a burden. After all, he has an E rank no matter how. May approached Ned and asked him what his relationship was with Mrs. Ray's. Ned didn't understand why May would care. The girl said she was worried about it because she didn't know what he was doing to raise in that position in a small wagon. Looking closely, it was clear that Miss Rise was not herself. Ned noticed that May was much more attentive than he had expected, but now he would like to use this trait for combat purposes. Ned knew that the other wyverns must be nearby, and they're so belligerent that the guy wouldn't be surprised if they attacked them. Ned started telling May that the rest of the wyverns were nearby. The girl decided that Ned wanted to get away from the conversation this way. Two large and red wyverns appeared in the sky. They were screaming and attacking. The girl inhaled the air, and then she began to scream in panic that they already exist. She realized that she had to fight again. Without waiting for anyone, May began to cut the tails with a sword. Rise looked at the girl and realized that she was really alone against the red wyverns. She also added and said that Ned had taken her into the team completely justified. Ned began to tell Rays that he had met her completely by accident and in general, he saw potential in her immediately when she deflected a Kraken blow with an ordinary sword. And at the same time, it is with a strength of three. Rays didn't believe that the girl had the power of three. She would have immediately thought that it was four, and also added that if the girl was trained, she would become really strong. Ned said that the girl is a favorite of Her Highness, Princess Lucille. Rise said that she was already aware. She also told the guy that he was very perceptive as always. The guy agreed with her. Ned believed that there were people in the world with whom it would not be possible to have a dialogue without doing so. May began to call for help. Ned didn't know where to go or whether to fight at all. He started asking if the rays would go. The girl agreed with the guy and told him that May needed help. She realized that the number of wyverns was greater than the information. May looked up at the sky and did not understand why there were so many of them, because there should have been two left. But the girl saw five in the sky. May realized that there was no way to get her out here on the strength of her spirit alone. Rise came up behind the girl and apologized, and then she asked if she needed to be replaced. Rise told the girl that she had seen what the Imperial Knight was capable of and that she would be on her own next. May was very pleased. Rise stared at the wyverns in the sky. The wyverns were looking at her. And then all five of them flew at the girl. The wyverns began to fly so low that Rise was able to climb on one and insert a sword into her head. The girl realized that there were four more left. Rise noticed that this wyvern didn't die. The girl couldn't understand why she was still flapping her wings. But after that, the dragon began to fall. The rays moved on. She saw that there was one in the back and one in the front. One of the wyverns wanted to fly into a place of narrow support, but Rays could have jumped back calmly. And then, with a single movement of her hand, the girl cut off one of the wyverns' paws with a sword. The dragon did not give up and wanted to bite off the sword, but the Rays cut the dragon in two. There are three more dragons left. May watched Miss Rays' fight and was shocked as she could. It was amazing for her. The sparkling sword is a unique equipment Rays. The Sword of Great Radiance it is said that there was a white dragon controlling the light, and this blade was forged from its teeth and scales. Being unimaginably sharp, the sword produces sparks when slashing. Ned said that the rays has a power level of six. With such physical strength, she inevitably leaves craters on the surface of the earth with her jumps. She could have felled a tree with her bare hands. The sword of great radiance, along with her level of strength, has incredible power. May looked up at the sky and saw that there was only one wyvern left. Rise pierced the throat of the last wyvern and slowly landed on the ground. And then she took her sword. The girl stood on the ground and counted how many wyverns she had killed. And then she began to count. And I realized that she had killed four. May was shouting at Ned to move away quickly. The last wyvern was coming at Ned. She was the fifth. The dragon changed its target immediately after realizing that they couldn't handle Ray's. 
Ned knew that if the wyvern flew into a human, he wouldn't stand a chance. Rise was standing next to Ned. She asked Ned if he needed help, to which the guy refused to help. Then he opened his bag, and he began to think about what he should use against this wyvern. But the guy noticed something. He saw that his body was suddenly glowing. But it was strange because he hadn't done anything yet. The wyvern was blinded by the light, but it still flew at the guy. But near Ned was a shield that the wyvern crashed into and fell. Someone began to say that this flash was a shield of the Lord. May said that magic that protects against enemy attacks is an extremely high-level technique. The girl asked Ned when he got it. Ned went on to say that he didn't remember seeing her at all. Ned thought it must have come from someone else, and something told him it was from Liz. But then in the guild, Ned wrote that, depends on circumstances, then in the column, unique equipment, because he has a lot of similar things. The guy wasn't too happy about it, but it looked like he was under some weird spell or something, even though the guy didn't even know it. Often, the equipment they give him is quite strange. Ned thought Mistress Liz was a busy wizard from the party of heroes. Although she can cast up to 400 different spells at the same time, she can also forget which spells she used. Ned decided that he should try to remember the spells that had been cast on him, to make sure that the shield had been cast without his permission. The guy thought that he shouldn't go back because this shield saved him, but he wants to say a little. The guy asked them to stop doing this because it is harmful to health, but for some reason no one stops. Every time they meet magicians, they cast spells on Ned, and the guy wants to rewrite the magic cast on him himself. Rays called the guy what they call the marked one. The guy didn't catch Raze's words and asked her again. The girl told the guy that it was better for him not to know about it. The guy said that in any case, they fulfilled the first request. And then she suggested that we complete the ogre suppression order today. They were standing around the trio. The girls began to fight. Ned was the support. Then they were done with the ogres and decided to go back to where they had taken their orders. Ned stood in line with the girls and told them that they had helped him out very well today and that he was going to report on the fulfillment of orders and he asked the girls to wait on the spot. They agreed with the guy and said they would wait. May was standing next to Mrs. Salish Rays and after a while decided to talk her out of it. She thanked Rays for helping and the girl was able to take a lot for herself with Rays' help. The lady said it was wonderful. Me started asking the girl why someone like her was helping Ned. May thought that she was always curious to know, because such a famous adventurer should always be busy. But still, she found time to help Ned with his requests. And you can't tell from her that she is dissatisfied. On the contrary, she is very motivated. Ray's asked May why she was asking this. And then the lady replied that she was forever in Ned's debt. May couldn't believe it. Now said that she was about to start her conversation. Even if you exclude debts from the past, Ned is a guy who is always happy to rely on someone. His favorite motto is, rely on others. And of course, it's easier in words than in practice. But even so, Ned also has a lot of suffering and frustration. And as much as Rise respects that kind of life path, she chose to help him. May didn't understand why the lady respected that. She knew that she felt the same way about Mrs. Free Race, and she thought that Race was very attached to Ned. Actually, Ned does have his own strengths, and May has some respect for him too. And if you ask her if she respects Ned like Mrs. Zezzy Ray's, she says she does. Ultimately, whatever power Ned has, it all comes from others. Even if you consider it a rarity, it is really very difficult to earn this deep respect. After a while, Ned approached the girls. He apologized for keeping them waiting, and then told them that he had brought a reward. Rays had told May that one day the girl would understand how proud Rays was to wield his sword for this guy. The girls looked at the money and were shocked at how much it was. They realized that now they don't have to worry about equal division. Ned said that 10% of it would be enough for him. The guy was saying that, as expected, there was enough here to split evenly between the three of them, but he didn't want to heat it up. Rays said she wanted to split the money equally. Ned said that the girls should distribute the reward according to the work done. Hearing this, Rays said that in this case, she would write down her share in the guild to Ned, because she can use her money as she likes. The girl told the guy that she always relies on him, and when it comes to negotiations and information extraction, she wants to pay the guy for it. She also told him that he could consider this as the opinion of the entire White Dragon Knight Order. At least Ned said he'd split the money equally with Rays. May talked about how she also liked it more equally, and today she just planned to help Ned. 
Moreover, if she got too much, then Mistress Lucille would get angry. Ned was thinking of Her Majesty, but he knew there was nothing he could do in such situations. Ned sighed and said that then they would divide into three equal parts. It's not that he doesn't want the reward. Ned would just take it if he could, but that's not fair. May was glad that she had beaten Ned in the argument. Rise agreed with her. She was also sure that Ned would donate most of the money somewhere. The lady said that now the guy manages four shelters. May was shocked by what she heard, and Ned corrected Mrs. Ruray's and said that another one had just been added, and this time he would send funds there. She remembered that Ned had a mercenary band, and she wondered what had become of him, since she hadn't heard from him recently. Ned said he was renting it to the Eastern Republic. For convenience, the name was changed to Night Order. It's just that Rays didn't notice, but in general, it stands out. May was shocked by what she heard. She couldn't believe that he was running a mercenary group and several shelters. May said that at this stage, Ned already has some political power. The guy replied that it was just a lot of connections, and Rays had told May that it was best not to believe Ned's words at times like this. Ned got a message. She told the girls that she would be leaving for a while. Everyone was wondering who this message came from. It was the princess of the Intel Kingdom. Ned didn't understand why she was calling. The princess was very happy to talk to Ned. The guy was also very happy about her call. It was the princess of the Kingdom of Intel, Iris Intel. Ned asked if the girl could call him, because he thought that his majesty could stop the girl, but the princess said that everything was fine. The girl began to say that she had taken refuge from her father's observation, which is why she was calling. Nor would such an obstacle separate her from Ned. The guy noticed that she is very energetic, just like a dog. She has the courage not to follow the will of her superiors as a princess. Although, apart from her position, she seemed to Ned to be an ordinary fair girl. Then there was the fact that she'd gotten involved with a guy when she was supposed to be very busy. Then Ned asked her if anything had happened to the princess. The princess replied that things had changed in the kingdom of Intal since Ned left, and she decided to tell them all. Ned decided that he would be very interested in listening to the girl. It doesn't seem urgent. Probably information that would have reached Ned sooner or later anyway. Most likely, the princess contacted just to show concern. The girl began to talk first about the workers in the castle. Namely, the financier Joldal left the castle. When the princess's father and his prime minister thought about paying taxes for the damage caused by the party of heroes, opinions were divided. Ned began to tell the girl that she should contact him if necessary and that he should be able to get him a new job. The princess already knew that Ned would say so and had already handed him the communication stone. Ned told the princess that this was very clever and that was exactly what he wanted to tell her. The princess said that she knew Ned Sama well. The princess also said that a change in the position of the church cardinal may affect the orphanages that are managed. Ned said that it seemed so. Ned apologized for putting the responsibility for the shelters on the princess. To which the girl replied that she was very happy because initially they opened these shelters together. In addition, the princess liked to play with children, and for her it was a great opportunity to relax. The guy told her that if that was the case, it was fine. The princess said that the children want to meet a guy. Ned didn't know how this was going to work, but he was trying to find the time as soon as possible. Ned keeps five orphanages, but hardly ever visits them. Only regularly checks the situation by communication and transfers the necessary funds. Ned was thinking that the kids probably thought he was a cool person. He thought he was feeling a little resigned, but it wasn't enough. But then the guy decided that maybe he calms himself so much, even though it's been so long since then. The princess had said that since Ned had left the country, she had been very restless. And then the girl asked why he was in the kingdom of Ovid, since the princess did not hear at all for what reasons he left the country. Ned told the girl that he thought the girl would stop him if he told her the reason. The princess had told Ned that he was already being slaughtered, and then she wanted to talk to him about something. Talk in person, face to face. Ned said the princess was already saying that. Ned apologized for what he'd done. Although if he missed the moment, Mita would have noticed his highness. The king must be scratching his head about the mood of the hero's party, as even the guy was having a hard time. Ned told the princess that he felt no compassion, and that he deserved it all, so he would leave it at that. And then I suggested changing the subject and asked if there was a diplomat named Emma. 
The girl said that she had not yet returned from the country to which she was sent. Ned told the princess that since she was traveling around the world, she was familiar with Ned's activities in other countries. The guy said that he usually keeps it all in the background, but since this is the case, he decided to ask about the fact that for sure, she says a lot to the highness. The princess asked if she should keep quiet about this conversation. Ned said not at all, and said that his majesty and the chancellor would sooner or later look into Ned's case. And the guy thinks it's time to move on. The princess replied to the guy that she had one thing concerning her father. Recently, she had seen the minister investigate something about the kingdom of NVIDIA under her father's instructions, and maybe they're planning something bad. His prime minister ran to the king. He opened the door and brought in the report. His highness didn't want to hear any more. And then his servant said that the heroes again destroyed the whole city. The king was not himself. And also the prime minister said that according to the information received, the party of heroes halfway to the Edvig mine fought with Pipspichikai devil. But as a result of the battle, massive landslides occurred. Fortunately, the sorceress Liz evacuated the nearest residence, as a result of which no one was injured. And even with the help of these residents, it was not possible to somehow save the city. Nell didn't understand why they decided to fight like this. The king sat there and asked the servant if they shouldn't pay a little more attention to their surroundings. After that, he ordered the communication stone to be carried so that he could listen to what Julius had to say. The prime minister told the king that Julius had come down with depression. The king was very angry and then asked what the rest of the party members were doing. The servant said it was mostly the same as last time. They started disappearing somewhere without saying where they were going. The warrior went to challenge the legendary monster that lives in the mountains. The sorceress is passionate about developing new magic in the depths of the cave. The priest awakens the dead from the cemetery and holds a celebration day after day. The king asked the prime minister about how they still didn't want to obey orders. The servant replied that they still refused, referring to Ned. The king had to admit one thing. Ned's influence was greater than any of us could have imagined. And then the king had the idea to eliminate Ned. He said that it can't be that a person who can't do anything could control such a party. He achieved this through brainwashing, or maybe blackmail. And in any case, if they're always following someone like that, it's better for them that Ned disappears from this world. The prime minister asked the king if this was too radical. His majesty replied that he should not say anything stupid, because initially, it was he who formed this party. So, he is responsible for the actions of this party. Given the damage done by now, it's too late for him to sign a death contract. Besides, the king didn't like Ned because he was flirting with his daughter, and he would never forgive him for that. The servant realized that the king's mood was serious. And then I asked his majesty what he was going to do after the elimination, and they already have information that Ned has already left the country. The king guessed that he was now in the kingdom of Ovid, and he began to say that he had a better idea, because the kingdom of Ovid is heavily in debt to him. The prime minister said that this is only to their advantage. Rise walked over to May, who was talking on the communication stone. The girl asked that it was a summons from Mistress Lucille. May couldn't answer anything because she was busy with the phone. After finishing the conversation, the girl said that the princess wants Ned to come to the castle, as she has a request for the guy. Ned knew he would have to go. He was planning to book a place to stay here, but since he was invited by Her Highness, it should be his priority. It was the princess's fault. Rise replied that if the two of them were going to the castle together, they should break up today. And the girl is even on hand, because she was just going to go to her friends from the party after that. Ned thanked her for the day and told her to let her know if she needed a boyfriend. May also thanked Rays for sharing her valuable experience with May today. Rays turned, waved, and left. It really was a valuable experience for May. And Ned was very nervous because he thought something bad was going to happen. Me was just as nervous as Ned. May told the guy to follow her. The guy asked the girl what the room would be like last time. The girl said yes. And this time, Mei was asked to lead Ned around the auditorium. The audience hall is a place where the royal families meet with visitors. But then, Ned saw Lucille for what she was. And this time, the guy doesn't need to introduce himself again. Mei and Ned were already approaching the door. The girl asked permission to enter. The princess was sitting on the throne. She asked Ned if he had registered successfully, because she knew that he would be joining the Adventurer's Guild today. Ned replied that it was thanks to Mei that he had passed it. 
The princess was glad that everything worked out. And then she decided to get down to business. She asked the guy if he had ever heard of such a monster as the poisonous demonic dragon. The guy said it was just a little bit. Just in case, the princess decided to explain everything. She said that the venomous demonic dragon was born in the northern part of the kingdom of Ovid, and as the name implies, it has a deadly poison. Also, no citizen of the kingdom of Nvidia believes in this dragon. The kingdom of Nvidia is also known as the country that made an oath with the dragon. Most people consider dragons sacred, but these same people laugh at not believing in dragons now. She said that venomous demonic dragons had been rampant in the kingdom's lands since ancient times. In the lands sent by their poison, nothing could be grown for a long time. In addition, poison is the cause of many epidemics. The number of people killed as a result of the damage is incalculable. Soon, the dragons began to harm the lands of other countries. Dragons, although not as scary as the Demon King, are still a global threat. And then the princess said that she wanted Ned to defeat this poisonous dragon. The guy looked at the girl with surprise and did not believe what she said. She also added that she had been told that Ned could handle it. Ned thought that was an exaggeration. It was an absurd request. The princess even looked different. May approached the princess and said that such an enemy cannot be defeated by one person. May said that even joint efforts with other countries could not defeat the dragon. The princess said she remembered everything, but was told that Ned could handle it. A year ago, when Ned was on another continent, he had heard that many big battles had taken place here, and it turned out that one of the battles was with this big dragon. Ned asked the princess if he looked like he could defeat a dragon. The princess said that according to the information she had heard, Ned would be able to do it. Ned asked who she had heard this information from. The princess said she couldn't say it. The princess apologized for being so rude to Ned, but she had her reasons. She said that Ned had to defeat the poison dragon, and if he didn't, Ned would be taken into custody until he agreed. May didn't understand what was going on. The guards told May that they would tell her everything later, but in the meantime, they had to take Ned. May said they owed Ned a favor and had no right to do so. The knight said that her highness order was more important. Ned didn't know what to do. May wanted to help, but mentally she's having a hard time. He noticed that the princess's eyes were red and that she must have been crying a moment ago. However, until recently, there was a hint of sympathy in her eyes. Ned told the princess that he was considered the weakest adventurer, so he wouldn't be able to defeat a dragon. The princess said that she had heard Ned's tongue hanging out. Ned knew he couldn't beat the dragon right now, and he also knew that he couldn't agree. He thought about it and realized that Lucille had said she would take him into custody so they couldn't have hurt Ned, and those swords are just a threat. Ned said that he had to ask them to step aside and threw the balloon on the floor. This ball turned into a smoke screen. The knights shouted at the boy not to run away, because they would catch him anyway. Ned ran away from that spot, smashed a window, and went out through it. He was still an excellent fugitive. But if he fought alone, he would definitely lose, so the guy always has several escape routes. He took a hook and jumped to another part of the kingdom. The knights couldn't catch him in any way. Ned couldn't hone his escape skills, but he did hone his relationships with people. Ned called Rise and told her that he had an emergency and needed her help. The guy was running away from the kingdom. She didn't know what Ned wanted her to do. The guy told her that he was in an emergency and needed to be saved. The girl said she understood. The guy is incredibly grateful when in such situations he is answered immediately. The knights couldn't find him. Ned got a call from Rise asking where he was. The boy replied that he had entered the city from the back entrance of the castle and was now heading towards the guild. The knights saw the guy and ran after him. The guy wanted to avoid attracting attention, but he didn't succeed. While running from the knights, he thought that all people think that he is a criminal, and he needed to get away. Rays offered to kill the opponent. The pursuers are the knights of this kingdom. Rays and her companions from the White Dragon Knight Order are an adventurer's party based in this country. And if they collide, then losses cannot be avoided. Afterward, Ned told the girl to just wrap them up and try to leave as little evidence as possible. Afterward, Ned thanked Rays for her help. Ned thought about what had happened and realized that very strange things were happening, both Lucille's attitude and timing. The girl told the guy to duck down after seven seconds. The knights ran up to Ned and told him not to fight back. Ned said he understood, but just let them grit their teeth. The knights didn't understand what was going on. 
and on the roof, Rise was waiting for them. Rays began to fight the knights, and then, when I fought with everyone, I asked the guy if he was injured. Ned said he was fine. Before she could catch her breath, Ned disturbed her again. The girl again began to climb to the guy and ask if he missed her and was he afraid. Ned said he wasn't scared or bored. Rays asked the guy to touch her because she missed him. The guy wanted to refuse her, but she has to pay for the service. Ned resigned himself and stood there. Rays said it was bad because she couldn't help but want to hold Ned in her arms. The guy told the girl that she would not let him out of her arms for the whole day. And then the guy said that now he was being chased and there was no time for this. The girl began to ask why he was being chased. Ned said he didn't know. The girl said it was just ordinary trouble. Ned told her not to talk because it sounded like he'd gotten himself involved. Ned knew it was trouble, and he was already used to them. But the problem was that little was clear and the guy couldn't let his guard down. Ray's said that asking to defeat such a dragon was strange and that someone must have such circumstances. The guy agreed with the girl. When Ned tried to explain the whole dragon situation to the princess, it was as if she didn't think Ned could handle it alone. The girl asked the guy that she was blackmailing you into fighting a poison dragon. The guy said it was true. However, the true purpose of the sun. She thinks it's different. The guy was saying that if the goal was to defeat a dragon, Lucille would have chosen someone else. And even though she knew that Ned couldn't defeat the dragon, she still insisted on it. And then the guy decided, what if the purpose of all this was to run him into him? And the dragon battle is that goal. Rise didn't understand why Mistress Lucille would do such a thing. The guy didn't know what the problem was, and if he did, he would have found a way to change her mind. Rays asked the guy about yelling that the guy must have screwed up somewhere or molested her. Ned told her not to compare herself to him. Ned didn't understand why the princess wanted him to fight the dragon, and why Ned might be better off fighting it. He asked Rays if the Knights of the Order of the White Dragon gathered together if they would be able to defeat the dragon. The girl said no, and you can't tell right away. Rays said that even though they were masters of fighting monsters, they were no match for him. And as soon as you get close to it, you will immediately be poisoned by poison. It is like an impregnable fortress. The guy told the girl that she was talking as if she had already fought with him. Rise said that was exactly what happened a year ago. For the battle with the dragon, a group of volunteers from neighboring countries was gathered, and the white dragon knights also participated. Ned had heard that the volunteers themselves had died in battle. Rays said that after just a few minutes, the losses were incredibly huge, and it was impossible to retreat. It was a nightmare. Auditory, visual hallucinations, paralysis, unbearable pain. Someone has suppurated skin. Someone is bleeding. Many who survived later had complications. Rise said they really understood what the poison was. And you can't even wish that on an enemy. But Ned still decided that what he needed to do now was find out what Lucille was up to and the easiest way to talk to her directly. But he realized that because of what was happening, it would be very difficult to get to her, and he didn't know what to do. Rays had a perfect idea. Then she decided to introduce Ned to her companion, since they are constantly on the run. Her companion would be reliable. Ned asked who it was. Rise said, there's a man in the castle you saved. Before that, she had come to the White Dragon Knight's favor and wanted to thank Ned. The guy looked at the girl in surprise. Ned was very happy that he saved a person in the past, even though he doesn't know who that person is and he needs to find out. Ned asked Rise where they were going. Rays said that the meeting place was the kitchen of the large dining room, and if they used the service entrance, they would have to go straight ahead. Ned asked about what would happen if they fell into a trap. The girl said it was already on her. The guy said that you need to take precautions and he will go into the store. Rise thought that the guy wanted to buy something and suggested that she would buy it for him herself, because it would be safer that way. The guy said no to the girl. Ned went to the shop and bought two raincoats. He left the money and left. Ned replied that the safety measures were cloaks, and he told Rays to put it on. The girl began to ask why. The guy replied that a girl, being the leader of the White Dragon Knights, should not be caught in a fight with the Royal Knights. Rays agreed with the guy and said she'd forgotten all about it. The guy told her not to forget such important details. Besides being wanted, Ned doesn't want to ruin Ray's reputation. The girl stood and thought. And then I realized that this was probably Ned's first gift to the girl. The guy told her it looked like it. Afterward, Ray's asked Ned to give her another gift when it was over. 
Ned replied that when it was over, he would do whatever Ray's asked him to do. Ray's heard the word everything and asked the guy if it was a word for going to bed with her. The guy replied that he was talking about things and it was better not to start it. Ned was tired, not physically, but mentally. The knights asked each other if they had found the guy. Everyone said they'd lost sight of it. They said they almost caught the guy, but someone attacked them, interrupting them. Ned suggested that the girl hurry back to the castle. In general, Zrank adventurers can easily defeat most enemies, so they often have little self-preservation. And the point is not even in the sense of self-preservation, but in the fact that they are absolutely insensitive. Such seasoned warriors who have seen everything on the way very rarely face problems that can frighten them. Ned saw that the security around the castle was less serious. They were laughing and chatting. Ned told Ray's to be in place, and they would start in 30 seconds. The girl wished Ned luck. The guy said that he should wish Ray's luck, because it will be she who fights. As always, Ned leaves the fight to someone else. Ned went to the wall and realized that he had time. And he remembers the inner plan of the castle. So when Ned gets inside with ease, it will be the easiest thing to do. Ned used the rope to climb over the wall. And then I was in the castle. Someone started calling Ned's name. It was the maid. Ned asked her if she was the one Rise had mentioned. The maid said she worked in the castle and her name was Helsia. She went on to say that Ned probably didn't remember anyone like her. But I remember that moment. That was two years ago. Remote from the capital, a very small village. Helsia had told the boy that it was true. Two years ago, Ned visited Helsia's village and helped defeat a monster that appeared nearby. Then the girl and Ned locked eyes for a few seconds. The girl did not believe that the guy remembered her face. Ned said that memorizing faces was his specialty. However, as Ned remembers, two years ago, there were no Starlight Adventurers yet. The girl said it was true. And then she added that before they became Starlight, Ned helped the girl a lot. The girl replied to the guy that before they became Starlight, she was in debt to Ned. The guy couldn't believe it. It seems that this was before the formation of Starlight. Then they expanded their activities. The girl wanted to ask a question. She wondered if Mr. D Ned was still in hiding. The guy said he was trying to be careful because he wasn't that desperate after all. Ned replied that he was tired of paying an idiotically high price for his fame. She was sorry that something like this had happened to Ned. Ned knew that Rise had already filled her in on the situation, but he still asked her again to make an appointment with Mistress Lucille. Helsia said she was reliable. After all, she's the head maid. Ned was glad that she was so successful. The maid replied that all of us who had witnessed the team's exploits had developed our ambitions to a considerable extent, and the girl was just one of them. And then the girl decided to leave. Ned thanked her. It was easy enough for Ned to get in here. This is probably the same as in the case of the bathroom. Partly due to the fact that in some parts of the castle security is somehow weakened. The maid replied that perhaps Ned could melt Mistress Lucille's frozen heart. Helsia could say no more, and said that it was best to contact the princess or the knight of the royal guard, May, for more information. The boy knew what lay beneath his frozen heart. It implies dissatisfaction. But it can't meet these kinds of needs. Ned decided to pull himself together and knew that he was being followed. Therefore, this is not the time to sit idly by. Outside the door, someone told him to wait. He tried to open it, but they shouted at him to wait. The guy stood and waited. Ned decided that she could escape and realized that it would only be worse for him. So he decided to enter. The girl was sitting on the bed, excited. She was shouting at Ned why he was here, and more precisely, how he came here. Ned said he wouldn't tell you how he got in, but he came to talk about the poison dragon. The girl replied that she had nothing to say to the guy. Lucille replied that all Ned had to say was whether or not he would take the job. The guy replied that they would find a common ground here. The girl was afraid of Ned, but the guy said he was against violence. The princess quit so that there would be no violence. Ned remembered the princess saying once that she didn't like fights and conflicts, but so much so. Ned asked the princess if she was faking it. Lucille said no and she told Ned that he was very confused himself and that he didn't know what to say. Ned replied that he didn't have the courtesy for someone who suddenly gave the order to capture a man. So he apologized and said that he didn't care that he was dealing with the queen and he would do what he had to. The guilty child should be punished. Ned slowly began to pull his hand down on Lucille's head, and after barely touching her head, he pretended to hit her. 
The girls started crying and shouting for May to come. Ned sat next to Lucille and tried to think the right thing to do, try harder or harder. When May came in, she didn't know what was going on and started asking Ned. May was yelling at Ned. She didn't know the guy would have the guts to hit Lucille. Ned replied that the secret to interacting with the nobles is to not let them feel superior to you or say outright what you're supposed to say. May realized that this sounded logical and said that Ned was the only one who could get out of this situation unscathed. Afterward, Ned said it was time to tell them what was going on. May offered to tell the princess everything herself, but Lucille said that she would tell everything herself once the subject was brought up. The girl said that the poison dragon sent not only Ovid, but also other countries. Ned said he remembered that. The poison dragon's nest is located in the kingdom of Ovid, so it usually doesn't stay in other countries for long. But there was one exception in the past. A few years ago, he invaded the Intel kingdom. He spent about a month organizing a war there. The damage was so great that the country is still recovering. In this regard, charges were filed against the kingdom of Ovid. Ned said that he had heard people say that four or five years ago some monster destroyed a small remote town. The girl replied that it was him. Lucille told him why he hadn't mentioned it before. Ned replied that he was busy in another country. He said that he constantly collects information about people, but he collects the rest of the information as needed. Moreover, Ned travels from one country to another alone, and maybe Ned was lucky not to have encountered a venomous dragon before. However, Ned said that monsters are natural disasters and blamed the country of Ovid for this. The girl asked Ned if he knew by what other name the kingdom of Ovid was known. Ned thought about it and said, Dragonland. The girl replied that it was true because the poison dragon was born in the land of Ovid. In addition, there are dragon protection activities in this country, but they don't believe that the poison dragon is the only exception. In other words, the kingdom of Nvidia is under suspicion from other countries. And if the country really needs protection, then they must be really hard to deal with. The dragon is poor in other countries, though not as badly as Ovid. Naturally, other countries will look for the culprit, so the kingdom of Ovid is surrounded by detractors, united by a common anger. The kingdoms began to demand compensation from the Nvidia kingdom, which was very beneficial to them. Plus or minus, it will be like this. Although this is an unwise claim, so far it is the majority opinion, but it is not so easy to cope with it. Well, the Intal Kingdom was demanding compensation. But the other day their king changed his mind. Ned listened intently. According to my father, he said something. Namely, that an experienced adventurer, Ned, recently arrived in the Kingdom of Nvidia. And he must be forced to defeat the venomous dragon, then the country of Intal will forget about compensation. Ned knew that the king had called his name. The girl said that if Ned doesn't defeat the dragon, then the Intal country will start to put pressure on compensation, which is still frozen. And at the very least, everyone needs Ned to try to fight, otherwise they won't be satisfied. Ned knew the king was aiming for him right away. It is also appalling that the kingdom is willing to accept the minimum terms of the deal. It is important for them that Ned gets into the fight, and even if the guy does not succeed in defeating the dragon, they can negotiate. Due to the situation of Nvidia, they know they have to keep their grip. The girl understood that this was a very suspicious transaction, but the princess's father accepted her terms due to the fact that there would be no losses for the country. Ned knew that was to be expected. Ned replied that if he defeated the dragon, the honors would be his. And if he dies, then both countries will be able to maintain relations as before. The princess replied that the compensation that the country requires is exorbitant. Therefore, in the current situation, the country of Nvidia cannot simply reject the proposed deal. The princess apologized to Ned, saying that the MX was pinned to the wall and there was nothing they could do. Ned replied to the princess that if they refused to be careless, it might seem that the kingdom of Nvidia refused to take responsibility for the poison dragon. May wanted to tell the guy something directly. She said that the princess didn't like the terms of the deal right away. And while they may and Ned were fulfilling requests from the guild, the queen desperately tried to dissuade her father. But the king was stubborn. So the queen had no choice but to take Ned into custody herself before the king did. If the king moved, there would inevitably be trouble. But if the princess takes Ned into custody, there will be at least some appearance that the conditions were fulfilled. Now Ned understood why he had thought it had all happened too quickly. Lucille was trying to save Ned in a hurry to get there before the king. 
she decided to take Ned into custody herself. Perhaps she was told to keep this information a secret from Ned. In any case, Ned decided that he would not allow himself to be arrested and just turn himself in. Ned apologized for hitting the princess. The girl said that everything was fine, and she was also to blame. And then the guy told the girl that she was not to blame for anything. To be more precise, it seems that Ned has quite a strong influence on this situation. The princess asked about the situation with the king. Ned told the princess that the reason he left the Intel Kingdom was because of a conflict with the king, and in fact, he was banished by their party of heroes. As a result, the current hero party is constantly on a rampage, and perhaps that's why Ned is the king's target. The guy felt like a defender of this conflict, and he told the girls that it was his fault for dragging them into this. If Ned hadn't gone to the Kingdom of Nvidia, there would have been a chance to avoid this conflict. May said that it wasn't his fault, and that the knight thought the Intel King was a muddy character. The princess agreed with May's words and said that the king was wrong. And also the princess added that in addition, the matter of the venomous dragon Vitali is quite long. Maybe it was Ned's fault, but sooner or later the question would have come up anyway. Ned decided that maybe it was. The Intel Kingdom is probably suffering greatly from the actions of the party heroes. There is a chance that they are trying to steal money from the Kingdom of Nvidia in order to cover the damage caused by the party. Ned realized that the culprit of all the troubles was the king of the Kingdom of Intel. And if they could do something about this freak, it would be solved. Ned asked Lucy how long it would take him to defeat the venomous dragon. May thought it was crazy, and the princess said it was a week. Ned knew that the poison dragon was so powerful that it could force an entire army to retreat. Therefore, it is impossible to gather decent forces in a week. The boy knew that the king really wanted Ned dead. But then the guy added that in a way, this is a chance to see if Ned can handle it in a week. The guy asked Lucille to stay at the royal castle today, and also to try to put him under arrest, to calm down and think about everything. The princess ordered May to arrest Ned and give him a room with better conditions. And so, Ned became a prisoner. The guy didn't know what to do. He thought that if the king wanted to kill him, he could fake his own death. Then he decided that it was better not to do this, because if he had to contact famous people, the whole truth would be revealed. Then he decided to ask the heroes of the party to pull themselves together. But Ned realized that he had no connection with them. There was a princess standing in one place, naked, and saying that there were some things that no one should see. He was glad they'd been able to talk privately with Lucille last night. The knights no longer pursue Ned. They let him go, and he can practically act with the same freedom. May came up to him. She kept her eyes on Ned because she was worried about the princess. May was surprised that the guy hadn't run away, even though he might have done so last night. Ned said that they explained that it wasn't his fault. But still, Ned still thinks it's all his fault, so he's not going to run away until he takes responsibility for what happened. May listened carefully to the boy. She knew the guy would say that. May had told Ned that he was a decent man, and she'd learned that very well in the last couple of days of their interaction. And also the girl asked if the guy is sure to go to the city now. Ned said he needed to find out something. The girl understood him. Afterward, Mi asked Ned what he thought of the poison dragon. Ned replied that he hadn't figured it out yet, and although it was difficult to defeat a venomous dragon, it was the king of the Intel Kingdom. And that means Ned will be able to negotiate with the king, put pressure on his weak spot. May didn't believe that the guy was capable of controlling the king of an entire kingdom. Ned replied that if he needed it, he could. But for now, he wants to use his connections. May answered why she couldn't. Then Ned said it was very dangerous. He said that his connections with humans could become a weapon of the devil if used improperly. And blackmail may be the first step. But if Ned has to, he can find a way to push anyone in the world. Ned prides himself on having the information network to pull this off. But still, he never wanted to wield such disgusting power. And besides, the guy couldn't let his friends be part of some rotten conspiracy. The guy said that if he used his connections to do dirty things, he would also dirty the lives of the people involved. And he doesn't want to do anything to hurt his allies. That is why Ned tries to avoid blackmail, fraud, and injustice as much as possible. Ned realized that maybe he was taking their conversation too seriously. He says that avoiding means not taking advantage of an easy opportunity to get your way. Some call it survival of the fittest, and perhaps this is the strength that is needed right now. May had told Ned that she was beginning to understand him. 
She said it wasn't just about a sense of duty. So Ned wholeheartedly respects those who have lent a hand. Ned said that each of them can do what he can't. And each of them is living a life that Ned can't live. And the guy doesn't want to influence how they live their lives. He treats everyone with respect for their aspirations. Then Ned suggested that we return to the subject. He began to talk about how to overcome the poison dragon. There are a lot of obstacles in the current situation. Afterward, he asked May if he should act. The girl replied that it was impossible, but ideally you need to overcome it. The poisonous dragon is a massive problem for the country. And May also added that there is no queen in her country. Because when she went to the celebration from King's Landing, she was sent by a poison dragon. Right in front of Mistress Lucille. And she's been hating battles ever since. So May was sure that the princess had the same opinion as the girl herself. Even without diplomatic gain or pressure from above. There must be someone who can put an end to the poison dragon. Then she asked Ned if there was anything he could do. The guy began to say that about six people from his acquaintances would be able to cope with the poisonous dragon. May was shocked by what she heard. The girl screamed at Ned to just ask them to do it. But the guy said that just because they can doesn't mean they will. He said that they are far away and the situations they are in are not simple. And then they will have to wait not just a few weeks, but several years. May was saddened to hear about a few years. After all, even Ray's, having the sixth level of strength and allies from the Order of the White Dragon, could not defeat the dragon. And to defeat such an opponent, you need the seventh level of strength. In other words, you need a hero, of which there are less than a dozen in the world. Ned had connections, but they weren't available. And to be more precise, only one of them is nearby. But the time is terribly wrong, and the guy will not be able to contact him. Defeating a dragon is not impossible if you do not take into account the weekly deadline and when it ends, Ned will dial May. The girl said that it would be great. The guy told the girl that about all that or does is meet people. And even if it took a few years, it would still put an end to the venomous dragon that had been rampaging until now. May was inspired. May wanted them to meet before it all started. And then she said that Ned was right. If it took time, the poison dragon could still be defeated, and that was really important, but she didn't know if it would solve the problems they were facing right now. Ned knew that in any case, he would not be able to meet the deadline set by King and Tao. Therefore, he tries to separate these two problems. Then she suggested changing the subject. He started asking May if Lucille was hiding anything. The girl looked at the guy in surprise, and he began to talk about what he was only interested in, and he did not beat the answers out of her. He just thinks May might know something about her. May pretended not to understand what the guy was talking about. Ned knew immediately that she was lying. She knew she couldn't look away. She spoke as confidently as ever. Then I made eye contact on purpose, and it didn't look very natural. After that, Ned walked over to the spot and invited May to go inside. The girl recognized the place. The guy looked at May and said it was a guild for appraisers, and Nell would have to find out for himself what the girl was hiding. They entered this place. It was the Appraiser's Guild in NVIDIA. There is such a profession as an appraiser. Their task is to analyze in detail the cost of each product. This work has its own specifics, and often it requires a huge amount of knowledge and education. The Appraiser's Guild is a place where experts are gathered. Moreover, Appraiser Guilds are often closely related to Adventurer Guilds. The items that adventurers find and bring are usually a mix of strange plants, minerals, and other items. Here in Tedious Appraisers, Ned was standing next to a girl who asked if he needed to request a grade. Ned said yes, because he had a mineral that needed a gemological examination. The girl began punching out Ned's order. And then she turned him down with the words that they are now very busy and they need to wait half a day. Ned knew the examination was taking time, and he knew he'd have to wait, but half a day was too long. The guy asked about whether the guild cooperates with foreign guilds. The girl said yes. She said that there aren't as many appraisers as adventurers, and sometimes sharing information is vital for the former. In this regard, active international cooperation is underway. To do this, Ned must be registered as a priority guide. Ned asked to be registered. The girl told him to wait a bit. May asked Ned what it was just now. Ned said that the priority guide is the status of a new special client who receives thousands of different assessments of unsolved subjects for one account. May couldn't believe that Ned had passed a thousand items. 
Ned replied that when visiting an unknown territory, any object Ned finds will be new to evaluate, and when you hang out with adventurers on the front lines, you will find thousands of different items very quickly. May found it amazing to be an adventurer. Later, the stomach came up and asked for help for waiting, and she also said that she would like to confirm something. In total, Ned has seven similar cards. With your name, a few more people submit items. Ned said it was. And later, the girl said that she was registering Ned. The girl asked to pay attention that if they use the services of the guild as a personal guide, then Ned can only use the card alone. And then the girl asked May to wait on the spot. The appraiser cutter came to Ned. He asked me to show Ned the object. The guy gave me a white stone. The appraiser saw a unique surface texture. The man said that there are no more than 10 such guides in the world, and this is clearly what a priority guide would bring, and he needs to study it in more detail. Ned handed over the stone. The guy said that in the company of first-class adventurers, you can really quickly become a priority guide, and yet, there are not so many first-class adventurers. The appraiser said that there are no more than 10 such guides in the world. It just so happens that all seven people who used the card used it on Ned's behalf. The appraiser, who was looking at the stone, realized that something was wrong with it, and then left the class where the man was sitting. May saw the guy and ran over to him. She began to ask what was the matter. Then Ned showed her the stone. The girl recognized the stone. Ned replied that he was still in a rank adventurer, and he wanted to know more about it. He decided to ask someone for help, and asked if May was interested. Ned went to the castle, and said that on the second day he saw a shadow. In some places, there are no knights, and it's definitely not for nothing. And the fact that Ned got that rock stuck in his shoe last night. The appraiser sat there and told Ned that it wasn't a rock at all. It's just a flake. He had never seen one in particular, but he was sure it was a dragon scale. It is slightly deformed and looks like the result of uneven growth. And so it happens that the scale could be mistaken for ore, since it is very similar. The appraiser offered to send the scale to another appraiser, but the guy replied that it was not necessary, because he already found out what he wanted. Ned asked May to wait outside so they could talk privately. The girl said she understood. When Ned reached the door, he could hear the sounds of the previous night again. But now he knew what that voice was. It was the voice of suffering. It was behind the door that the guy picked up the scale, which means, What is the truth received from the appraisers? Dragon disease.